Pop! OS for the longest time has shipped a heavily modified version of GNOME. Typically this is referred to as the Pop! Shell or the Cosmic Desktop. But for a while now, Pop! OS has wanted to move away from GNOME and not to another desktop that has its own goals and own requirements, but to a desktop that they are fully in control of. So for a while now, they've been working on a new desktop environment under that same Cosmic name. Personally, I don't like the naming, not that Cosmic is a bad name, that they're referring to both things as Cosmic. So finding information about Gnome Cosmic compared to the new Cosmic is kind of annoying. But the name's not really that important. What is important is the technology they're using to build this. So this new Cosmic desktop is heavily reliant on the Rust language. Heavily reliant is kind of an understatement though, because from what I've been seeing, everything that can be built in Rust is being built in Rust. And to make my life oh so much easier, they've made a meta repo, Cosmic-Epoch. This is basically a repo of all of the other repos involved in the Cosmic desktop, basically linking to all of the different components. And the current state of the desktop is very, very pre-alpha, but we're expected to see a completed, at least, you know, initial version sometime in 2023. Whether that is going to actually happen is still something we are waiting to see, but there is a whole year ahead of us, so we'll see what they do. And the reason I'm talking about this now is some screenshots from the new GUI design were posted. So this is the dark theme and this is the light theme. Keep in mind, okay, very, very important. Alpha software, everything is still subject to change. So this is the dark theme and this is the light theme. Personally, I think it looks pretty good. I've heard some people complain that it's a combination of like a high contrast and a low contrast theme. But as someone who has, you know, no insane knowledge about design, if someone showed me this as the desktop they were using, I would think it looks pretty good. But clearly judging by the coloring, the dark theme is the way you're intended to use it. We have this, you know, light cyan, whatever you want to call it, which is basically the same color as the logo, whereas this blue on the light theme is more of your typical, you know, primary blue color. Besides the fact that the buttons look the same as the dark theme, if you showed this to me and said this was the light theme of Pop! OS, there's nothing about this that really screams Pop! OS to me. I don't know what that means to a designer and how you can approach that, but that's just the way that I'm seeing it. Now, all that aside, these two interfaces are only a few days of development work, but I've seen some people confused about what that actually means. Design work and the engineering work, the actual coding work, are not the same thing. So this design concept is about a year or so of work, and then a couple of days actually writing the code to, you know, make them function. So even though this is alpha and very subject to change, consider this the general direction of the desktop. Don't focus on things like, oh, it doesn't have accessibility yet. Like, yeah, that will come later. Deal with that when that's ready to be dealt with. It doesn't need to be dealt with when you're just literally getting the functionality built into the interface. But one thing you might be curious about is what framework is being used to build this? Because early on the interfaces they were making were being built in GTK, but they wanted to move away from GTK as well. And if they want to build things in Rust, well, you can't exactly do it with GTK. Yeah, there are Rust bindings for it, but GTK itself is never going to be written in Rust. So it's definitely not QT or Flutter or something built in WebTech for something like Electron. No. It's a framework called Iced, and if you're like me, you are probably very confused about what Iced actually is. So Iced is a native Rust cross-platform GUI library. Now the cross-platform aspect isn't really that big of a deal for something like Pop! OS. Sure, some of the applications technically could probably work on Windows if they're not like Linux-specific things, but you're still making a Linux distro, that doesn't really matter. 
the more important aspect is native Rust. ICE isn't just a bunch of Rust bindings to C code or Python code or anything else out there. It is all written in Rust, except for this 0.7% in GLSL. I don't know what that is, but the Rust part's the important part. And it seems like since then, gaining quite a bit of traction, right now having 15,500 stars on GitHub, that obviously doesn't mean the project is incredible, but a lot of people are certainly interested to see where it's going to go. And MM Stick, one of the engineers on PopOS, discussed this choice. Iced is a native Rust GUI toolkit that's made enough progress lately to become viable for use in Cosmic. Various Cosmic applets have already been written in both GTK and Iced for comparison. The latest development versions of Iced have an API that's very flexible, expressive, and intuitive compared to GTK. It feels very natural in Rust, and anyone familiar with Elm will appreciate its design. Along with this fun little addition, GTK is one of the most inefficient GUI toolkits because of GObject and C. Every widget and piece of data is a separate heap allocation with dynamic dispatch. Iced is significantly faster at rendering in comparison and doesn't require dynamically loading dozens of chunky libraries. And had this to say about GTK. Every aspect of GTK is considered bad practice for software development and GUI architectures today. Disadvantages cannot be resolved unless all code is thrown out and a new toolkit is created from scratch in Rust in a similar vein as Iced. And there is a lot more explanation here about the problem with GTK and how this is going to be addressed with Iced, so I'll leave that linked down below. Now there are a few other projects that make use of Iced, and the project had been around for a couple of years. So the first release was all the way back in... 2019. Now, this was the first alpha release. The first stable release was in 2020. But one thing I was very curious about is why not Orb TK? This is another Rust GUI toolkit used as a part of Redox OS. Redox is another Unix like operating system that is not Linux, it's its own separate thing. But Orb TK does work on Linux. It's mentioned somewhere on this page. So Redox, Linux, Mac OS Windows, and other things have not been tested or are being worked on and things like this. This seemed like a toolkit that could have been used perfectly fine. And the reason I mention it is obviously one, it's written in Rust, but two, the guy who runs Redox OS is a System76 principal engineer, a Pop OS maintainer, Jeremy Soller. So I asked Jeremy on Twitter. It involved input from the whole Cosmic team. Iced is not just a toolkit written in Rust or that can be used from Rust. That means very little. The way it works in combination with other Rust code is idiomatic. Basically, it's in the normal way of writing Rust. Using the toolkit feels like you're using native Rust. It is easy to use and performant. We looked at many options and iced one. But this does raise concerns over desktop consistency. So we can sort of trust that everything built specifically for the Cosmic Desktop is going to look like it belongs in the Cosmic Desktop. That seems like a basic requirement that hopefully they are going to meet. But when you start installing third-party applications, this is where things can start to fall apart very quickly. Now, even if you install something that isn't for GNOME or isn't for KDE, but it's still written in GTK or Qt, it's still going to, you know, fit within the theming of that desktop. And there's even tooling and themes available to match your themes between GTK and Qt. But the same isn't inherently available when using a whole new toolkit. But Jeremy Soller and MM Stick do show some concern for this as well. So in reply to Nick from the Linux experiment, sadly there are no options for that already, referring to visual and UX consistency between applications. 
but we plan to sync what we can with our GTK3 and GTK4 theme and colors with lib at waiter. And once again, in reply to Nick from the Linux experiment, MM Stick, otherwise known as Michael Murphy, says, Regarding cohesion, I think there can be a good middle ground with our theme editor automatically generating compatible GTK themes, perhaps even for lib at waiter to some extent. But there is a lot more rust than just the GUI toolkit. We have the, I guess you would call it the desktop itself, the shell, whatever you want to call it, which is going to support both X11 and Wayland. It's a bit too early to do only Wayland, but maybe one day that's going to happen. Now, the Wayland backend is what I want to mainly talk about, because it's got a really interesting choice. It's not using WL roots, like most of the non-GNOME or KDE desktops are going to be using. And it's not being built on KDE. And it's definitely not being built on GNOME. It would be really funny to stop using GNOME directly and then build your Wayland compositor on GNOME instead. No, instead it is using a compositor library that you've probably never heard of, and most people probably have never heard of, Smithy. Like with Iced, it existed long before PopWest started using it, its first release being all the way back in 2017. Granted, there weren't actually releases in between, it just went from 0.1 to 0.3. Clearly there is a number missing there, I don't know what happened to it, but you know, it is what it is. But the funny thing about this one is people from System76 and people working on PopOS have actually taken over the repo. So this VBurger guy is the guy who actually made the repo, but he's not the like primary contributor anymore. That goes to someone by the name of Draculix, and Draculix works on the Cosmic Desktop. Now, UI consistency isn't really that concerning to me. You've seen my desktop before, you know that I don't really care about it, I just have it mostly looking good enough for me. What I really care about, though, is functionality on Wayland. So, the reason why everybody builds on WL Roots is because WL Roots is going to add specific protocols over the top of the Wayland Core protocol. So, every Wayland compositor is using Wayland Core, but that doesn't cover every single use case. So, WL Roots, KDE, GNOME are all going to add extra things that certain applications are going to need. So when a developer makes an application, they're going to make it with those protocols in mind. And the problem with adding a new compositor library is unless they specifically go out of their way to support the protocols of things like WL Roots, for example, there is going to be no tooling that relies on these extra protocols that works on Smithy, at least, you know, for a short while. Maybe after a year or two, a lot of that tooling is going to be developed, but it is going to be very far behind with that third-party tooling. Now, this doesn't cover every piece of application that works on Wayland. A lot of applications don't rely on any of these protocol extensions, but a lot of them do. Now, being a full desktop environment and not trying to be this, you know, minimal user experience like Sway, for example, where you have to go and install everything yourself, this isn't that big of a deal because most of the tooling that most people are going to care about is going to be a part of the desktop. But when you want to start experimenting outside of that, that's when problems are going to arise. They are making sure one very, very important thing is being dealt with, though making sure they build an XDG portal front-end. So this is the thing that lets you actually, you know, do desktop capture with OBS, use screenshotting tools, have flat packs actually function. This is very important, and it's good they did it. And as much as I'm cautious about them building a new desktop and relying on a different GUI toolkit, it is going to let them do things that wouldn't be as easy to do using some of the other tooling. For example, I'd love for Cosmic to allow more visual customization of the top panel and dock to allow things like transparency without having to use third-party plugins like Blur My Shell. MM6 says, We are aiming to support transparency, blur, gloss, and I hope they include things like drop shadows and various other things like that. Having your own desktop is absolutely going to be a lot of work, but it lets you do anything you want to do. You are not beholden to anybody else to go and upstream it. If you want it upstreamed, well, you're upstream. Do whatever you want with it. And even though a lot of people have been very critical about this just based on these couple of screenshots, 
I wish them the best of luck. And hopefully, you know, in maybe next year, maybe a year or two after that, you have a really good desktop to work with. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you use Pop OS? Did you know this change was happening? Do you care this change was happening? Or maybe you're going to go and try out Pop OS just to see what this cosmic desktop is all about. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like this video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, Go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting bear pay, link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.